In this video, we will look at simple methods to create a low poly terrain in Blender that can then be imported into Unity. We'll start by modeling with a plane. I've scaled mine up 10 times. Next, enter edit mode and bring up the specials menu by pressing W. Choose the first option to subdivide. This will open a context menu on the right. Under number of cuts, enter 30. In general, I like the faces in my terrain to be approximately one by one in Blender units. In this case, they're a little bit smaller than that, and that's okay. Next, turn on the proportional editing tool and make sure the fall off is set to smooth. To create mountains, select a vertex or face and begin pulling up. You can control the range of the proportional editing tool by using your mouse's scroll wheel. Rather than pulling the mountain up to full height, it generally works better to pull up little by little, effectively building up the mountains. If you select several vertices or faces and pull them up together, you will create a raised plateau. Likewise, if you push them down, you can create a depression that can form a lake or a canyon. Abrupt square edges on the terrain don't look the best, so let's push them down to form a shoreline around the terrain. This may look good enough for some, but I don't like the regularity of the faces. They are all the same shape and size, so let's fix that by adding a displace modifier. You will need to add a texture to the modifier. By default, all new textures are black, which pushes the terrain down. What we want is a little randomness. So in the texture tab, change the type to clouds or any other pattern that you like. If you scaled up your plane, your terrain probably looks a bit chaotic. To solve this, you can do two things. First, press Ctrl A and apply the rotation and scale. If the terrain is still too noisy, adjust the strength of the displace modifier. I often find the values between 0.1 and 0.5 work pretty well. Next, let's add a decimate modifier to break up the regularity of the size and shape of the polygons. Setting the strength to a value somewhere in the neighborhood of 0.5 generally works pretty well. Once you like the look of your modifiers, apply each of the modifiers starting at the top of the stack. This will make adding the colors easier, but make the changes by the modifiers permanent. Next, we wanna add some color to our terrain. Let's start by adding the grass color. When doing low poly work, I like to turn off the specular and turn the emit value up to between 0.05 and 0.15. This helps prevent overly dark shadows. With the grass done, let's add a new material for the mountains. Select all the faces of the mountains. The circle selection tool is handy for this and can be turned on by pressing C and turned off by right clicking on your mouse. Adding some sand around the edges will look nice as well. Just for fun, let's do a render and get an idea of what the terrain will look like in Unity. If you press 0, the viewport will change to look through the camera. Then pressing Shift F will allow you to control the camera with the standard WASD keys. Once you've got your camera positioned, press F12 or select Render Image from the Render menu to get a preview. The next step is to add some surrounding sand and water. Create a new plane and scale it up larger than your terrain. Make sure to subdivide the plane as well. Add the displace and decimate modifier like we did before. Move the plane down so that it roughly lines up at the bottom edge of the terrain. To add water, duplicate the sand plane and move it up. Create a new material for the water. You can play with the transparency so that some of the sandy bottom will be visible through the water. Do another render and make any adjustments to sea level or colors if needed. The terrain will look different in Unity, but the render gives you a decent idea of how it will look. These models can now be imported directly into Unity, or you can bake the textures as in an earlier video. 